John Kennedy came to Oklahoma only twice as president, early in 1963 for the funeral of Senator Robert Kerr. And 14 months earlier, 52 years ago this week, October 29th, 1961, he came to dedicate a two-lane country highway in a LaFleur County mountain hollow. The world will remember President Kennedy next month for the way he died a half century ago. But there are Oklahomans who remember vitality and promise, who saw it up close and have never forgotten it, who recall the day the future seemed filled with possibility when Camelot was shiny and new, that day the president came to Big Cedar. It took a lot of work to cut a path over the Kayamichis, a road that opened the way to Broken Bow and Ida Bell. It brought a great sense of pride to this forgotten corner of Oklahoma. And one October Sunday, not soon after it was finished, it brought the president of the United States. I don't think there'll be another president like that. The big army helicopter lumbered over the mountain and touched down in Big Cedar, a country crossroads that was suddenly the center of the world. Sheila Bolton was there, 13 years old. Everyone you talked to was, they were going to go that day. They were going to be there. It would be their only chance to ever see a president in person. John Kennedy had come at the invitation of Senator Robert Kerr. Kerr family lore says the visit was in return for the senator's vote on a Medicaid bill. The politics didn't matter to an 11-year-old Marty Wisdom. It's something you'll never forget. The president climbed aboard a flatbed trailer and looked out across a field filled with 25,000 people. I am proud to come to Oklahoma. He spoke for six minutes in a state just 30 years distant from the Dust Bowl migration. Now the citizens of Oklahoma stay in Oklahoma. Now they recognize the opportunities that ought to be found in this state. The podium the president stood behind was brand new. A few weeks before, Willard Henson, woodworking teacher at Hevener High School, had pulled aside his top senior and told Stanley Fowler he had a project for him. But he told me that I could, uh, I could have uh, someone help me with it, and he suggested Cecil. Cecil Lawler was a 15-year-old sophomore. And the magnitude of it probably didn't sit on, it, sit on me in at that time but uh, the excitement of it did. Stanley and Cecil gave that podium their all, perfectly joined Ashwood. And when the president ended his remarks and stepped from behind it, as this country moves ahead, he signed his name to it, then cut a ribbon, stepped back onto the highway, and moved along a fence, touching Sheila Bolton's hand. She told her mother she'd never wash it again. I did. <laughs> I hollered. I got him. <laughs> The president traveled on to Senator Kerr's ranch in Poto. There, he was treated to a mock auction of some of Kerr's prized black Angus. Just right over there, about where that gate post are, right over there. He's right in that area. Winfred Burden can see him still, the president who took the time to shake every cowboy's hand and ask each of their names. I got my picture and paper mounted with him. <laughs> I was the only cowboy in the outfit that got their picture mounted. It's a clipping he carries still. 21 years old on a little gray mare, yellowed with age, but brimming with pride. I brag just a little bit about it, you know. <laughs> Ever so briefly, they could all brag, until another presidential trip to Texas, until the 1960s cascaded down upon them. All those thousands who stood here that day, marked three years after Dallas with a monument, overgrown and forgotten now. <laughs> Stanley and Cecil's podium ended up at the Oklahoma History Museum in the capital city, where we found it stored in the basement. Still sturdy as the day two teenagers built it with pride, still bearing a signature of the man who came to remind them all that they too had a place at the national table. That day the president came to Big Cedar. I don't ever drive through this road that I don't look and remember. Now inside this story at newson6.com, you'll find a link to the Kennedy Presidential Library where you can listen to the president's big cedar speech in its entirety and see other photos and documents relating to that trip. Terry, I was struck, 25,000 people there, not a single one of them had to walk through a security checkpoint. Isn't that something? It was a different time. It was. Mayberry-ish, you might <laughs> right. say. They were brought picnic lunches and waited for the president because he was their president. You know, I was struck by that he would carry that picture around with him for 52. He carried it with him every day, right? Winford 
Robert Burden keeps that in his oh breast pocket and pulls it out and shows you. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. It shows the meaning of that. That was great. Thank you so much oh, for sharing that. My with pleasure. Us. My pleasure.